I hope you're having a great day. <clears throat> well, today I want to talk about uh, thyroidism. Thyroid is a problem that plagues millions of people across the world. Now, we've done several videos on thyroid and we'll be posting it in the thread post this video. But there's one thing that everyone needs to know. For the longest time, people believe that when they're on thyroid medication, they need to be on this medication for a lifetime. Now that may be true for a small population of people, some people who have their thyroid glands removed, some people have gone through thyroid cancers, and of course a population of people that's not willing to change their lifestyles, that's not willing to look at the way they sleep, manage their stress levels, exercise, then yep, if you're gonna have those problems, you're gonna be on medicine for a lifetime. But the point I'm trying to make right now is not to discourage people who are on thyroid medication. I'm here to, understand, to make you understand and ask yourself, are you being treated for the right thing? You know, if you come under the category of thyroid, yes, you can have an underactive thyroid gland. You can have a hyper or you can have a hypothyroid issue. But there's another thyroid problem that you may be having and you may be, be, you may be treated with the same protocol as an underactive thyroid gland. And that doesn't have to be the treatment. And you do not have to be on that medicine for a lifetime. If you make the right lifestyle changes, when you have the right approach to the root cause of your thyroid problem, we already have hundreds and thousands of people who are no longer on thyroid medication. You know, they've made lifestyle changes, they've understood their bodies, they've understood that the body has this innate intelligence to heal itself if it's given whatever it requires to heal itself. And then you're off medication for a lifetime. It's as simple as that. You see, our mindsets are so fixed at what we constantly hear. I'm not here to tell you that if you're on your thyroid medication, you should not listen to your doctors and you should jump off your medication. No, you cannot jump off your medication. You first need to build that protocol in your system, change your lifestyle, and with the supervision of your doctor, as your levels get better, your doctor will slowly reduce your dosage to the smallest possible dosage, and if your levels are still behaving the right way, they will stop you from your medication. Let's understand, there is one test that you need to do, two tests that you need to do if you are a thyroid patient right now to understand whether you really have a thyroid problem which is underactive or you have something called a Hashimoto's thyroid. They're two completely different kinds of problems. Now in the medical world, this, in the world, the symptoms are the same, which means the medical treatment is also the same. If you're on a thyroid medication right now, your doctor's done nothing wrong, okay, but they're treating your symptom. If you're being treated on a symptom, you will be on lifestyle medicine, you'll be on medication for a lifetime. But if you look to address the root cause, that's when you have the possibility to completely heal and prevent the possible side effects of the medication that you're currently taking right now. So now let's understand what happens in a Hashimoto's thyroid. So right now you've been put in a category of a thyroid problem and you're probably on this drug. It could be 100, 150 MCG, it could be 80, 75, whatever it is. You need to do a test called an anti-TPO or an anti-TG. I'm gonna explain what that is. That is an anti-thyroglobulin test and it's an anti-thyroid peroxidase test. I'm gonna explain exactly what happens in the human body in a Hashimoto's. If you have a Hashimoto's, your focus on healing your Hashimoto's thyroid will be entirely on your gut. It's because you have a gut problem that you have a Hashimoto's. Now let's understand, you have an interstitial wall. This is in your intestine. Think of it as a thin fishing net with small holes. That's a perfect gut. We digest our food, we eat our food, we digest it. Digestion becomes in the, uh, happens in the stomach. Your food moves down to your intestine and on this thin fishing net with little holes, imagine small little fingers. These little fingers absorb nutrients, vitamins, minerals from the food that's reached your intestine, pulls it across these small holes in the fishing net and puts it into your blood. And your blood carries all of these minerals and vitamins and proteins to your organs, to your cells, to your hair, your skin and everywhere else. That's a perfectly working gut. Now over time, because we have chronic constipation, because we eat acidic food, we eat spicy food, it doesn't suit us, we have bad gut bacteria, we have constant bloating, we overeat, we have poor eating habits and all of that stuff, our gut lining gets inflamed. So that thin fishing net with small holes, the small holes become larger and larger. Okay, when we have a lot of bloating, our bad bacteria is more than our good bacteria. This bad bacteria pokes holes in that fishing net, making these small holes larger and larger. So now we have an absorption issue. Certain molecules, certain, certain bacteria, certain toxins, certain chemicals which are not supposed to enter the blood 
and exit our system now squeeze through the larger holes into our blood. It's not meant to be in our blood. So the human body with its brilliant intelligence raises the immune system to attack those molecules, those toxins. Now there's something called molecular mimicry. A lot of these molecules mimic certain glands in the human body. So for some people, they mimic the thyroid gland. For some people, they mimic the knees and the joints. So now all of a sudden you have your immune system attacking your joints, attacking your knees, attacking your skin. So we see eczemas, we see psoriasis, we see arthritic pains, we see joint pains, we see all of these issues happening. Now in the case of Hashimoto's, what happens is, your immune system identifies that there are foreign invaders in your blood, which are not supposed to be there. So it starts creating antibodies to basically fight them. Now this, your immune system, because these molecules mimic your thyroid gland, they mimic thyroglobulin, the antibody in your thyroid gland. So your immune system starts attacking your thyroid gland and your thyroglobulin, which is getting attacked, your immune system now produces an antibody for thyroglobulin. That's exactly what anti-TG is, anti-thyroglobulin. So this is an antibody produced and it stays in your blood because your gland is being attacked by your immune system. Now, what is the root cause of this? How much of your thyroid medication is gonna solve this problem? Symptomatically, maybe your levels will look a little bit better, but you've just masked the bigger problem of a gut syndrome. And we all know that your immunity starts in your gut. There are, gut, there are relationships of your anxiety, your depression with your gut, your hormonal imbalance is connected with your gut. Everything is connected with the gut in the human body. So you can go on popping all those thyroid medications and your TSH will look good, your T3 will look good, your T4 will look good. And that's why they tell you you need, you need to be on a medication for a lifetime only to make your blood parameters look good. But guess what's happening? Because you have an autoimmune disorder, today it may be a Hashimoto's, tomorrow it could be an arthritis, it could be a lupus, it could be a multiple sclerosis, it could be a cancer, it could be any autoimmune disorder that you can Google because the root cause, which is your leaky gut, which is your inflamed gut, is not being focused on. So when you focus on this, so when you do, when you do these two tests, an anti-TPO and an anti-TG, and if you have a thyroid problem and these counts come high, if these counts come positive, you now know that your thyroid problem is caused because of your gut, because of your autoimmune condition. And the focus is if you work with your autoimmune condition by healing your gut, guess what? That TPO count and that TG count will reduce as it reduces, the attack on your thyroid gland is lesser and lesser, which means, yes, there will be a day that you can actually get off your thyroid medication and you will be healed completely with the supervision of your doctor. It's as simple as that. Now, if it's not a Hashimoto's and your test comes back perfectly fine, your TG and your TPO is absolutely fine, then you know it's an underactive thyroid gland. It could be hypo or hyper for you and you still have to believe that you can reverse that as well. It requires lifestyle. Like I said, there are a few people who may need it for a lifetime, but everyone else who believes that they need to be on it for a lifetime, if you put effort into your life, it's an underactive gland. We know that an underactive thyroid gland lacks selenium. We know that your T3 and T4 conversion happens in your liver, which is to treat your thyroid gland and heal it, you need to also treat your liver. Why isn't your liver working the right way to have the right conversion of T3 and T4, number one? So you see, you know, we're not machines where you can only focus on a thyroid gland and medicate it and expect to heal it. At a symptomatic level, great. Everything in the human body is interconnected, right? From your gut, to your liver, to your thyroid gland, to your entire endocrine system, and your entire metabolism depends on everything that's connected by cells and hormones. So if you're looking at healing, you treat the body as a whole. If you're looking at just better symptoms on your blood parameters, you can go on popping all the medication that you want, but understand that every medicine going into your system has a side effect, and you're actually masking the root cause of a problem that can now lead to several other conditions in your system. So coming back to a Hashimoto's, all we know it is your immune system attacking your gland. How do you stop the attack of your immune system? You look purely at your gut. The number one thing is you get off gluten and dairy completely because those are inflammatory foods. You may not be intolerant to it. You don't have to be intolerant to it. A lot of people do their IgE tests and their food tolerance and they say, oh, we don't have a problem with gluten. We don't have a problem with milk. Yes, you may not have a problem with it, but they are inflammatory foods. Any inflammatory food will affect that thin fishing net that we spoke about. So if you wanna heal that net, 
you remove inflammatory foods from your diet. So the number one thing is you get off gluten and you get off dairy completely. The second thing is you identify if you have a leaky gut and that's why you're leaking toxins and bacteria and protein molecules into your blood which shouldn't be there. If you're constantly bloated, there is a chance that you have a leaky gut syndrome. People who have Graves disease, people who have Crohn's, people who have gut issues need to check their TPO and their TG count to ensure that they're not leaking all of these antibodies into their blood. So the idea is seal that gate, rebuild your intestinal walls, your gut lining, so that your own body protects you and your own body can relax its immune system. The third thing that you have to look at is adrenal fatigue. When you're chronically stressed, you're producing more and more cortisol. When you're chronically stressed, your gut lining is automatically inflamed. So you can be eating the best diet in the world, but if you're constantly stressed, and that's why we stress so much on the impact of chronic stress on your gut health, your immunity, your hair, your skin, your thyroid, and everything else. So you wanna look at the health of your adrenal glands, which means more meditation, you know, letting go of things, accepting things, not taking too much of stress or making your life more favorable for you. Just taking stress to build businesses and all of that stuff at the cost of your body is not worth it. And the third is your digest, the fourth is your digestive health. If you're constantly acidic, you're constantly bloated, you don't have the right amount of prebiotics, probiotics, you're not managing your microbiome, yes, you are gonna have an inflamed gut. So that is your healing process if you have Hashimoto's. Of course, depending on your levels, you can be prescribed selenium, you can be prescribed MCTs like coconut oil or ghee, which plays a huge role in handling your gut. But you just can't go on taking excess coconut oil and ghee without, being, without it being calculated for you because then you can have cholesterol issues and other issues so everything has to be done the right way the first thing that you need to do is find out which kind of thyroid problem you have if is it a Hashimoto's if it's a Hashimoto's you have the whole gut protocol that you need to introduce into your life if it's not a Hashimoto's then you look at your underactive thyroid gland. What minerals am I deficient in? What vitamins am I deficient in? Am I too stressed? Like we need to understand a slow working thyroid gland. How does the human body slow you down? When most of us are moving too fast in life because we're over ambitious, we've taken on more on our plate than we can handle, we're stressed, we socialize, we sleep less. There's only one way the human body slows you down, using your own endocrine system. It slows down your thyroid gland because your thyroid gland is responsible for controlling your metabolism. So you either have high metabolism or you have low metabolism, which is why people with thyroid glands struggle to lose weight. They have dry skin, they have weight gain. They struggle to lose weight no matter how much they work out, how well they eat, because your thyroid gland slows you down if you don't slow down your life. Okay, sickness is caused when our own glands slow us down because we're moving too fast and we don't give enough of rest. One commonality that we see with people who have thyroid, be it Hashimoto's or an underactive thyroid gland, is their stress levels. When you're constantly stressed, cortisol is also a hormone. If your cortisol is elevated throughout the day because you're stressed throughout the day, there are other hormones that fluctuate in the body. One of them is insulin, one of them is estrogen, one of them is progesterone, one of them is tyroxine. Tyroxine is also a hormone. So you can go on taking all that medication for a lifetime with the side effects, or you can choose to decide which thyroid problem do I have in the first place. And now if it's underactive, let me change my lifestyle and have a protocol to heal the underactive gland because I don't want a gland which is underactive in my body if I can control it. And if it's a Hashimoto, let me fix my gut because if I don't fix my gut, I have low immunity, I have poor skin, I have the inability to lose weight, I have hair fall, I have malabsorption of nutrients through my thin fishing net. And that's how we heal. When we look at the root cause, medicine is not bad for you. If you have to take the medicine as a crutch to treat the symptom, take it. But if you're on a medicine, you should be making a plan right now, whatever medicine it is, to change my lifestyle because the question you should be asking yourself, why am I sick? Why am I sick? Why isn't my gland working the right way? Why am I unable to produce insulin? Why do I wake up with so many pains every day? All the tablets that you take are quick fixes, symptomatic approaches, great, take it. But guess what? It is gonna come with side effects at some point or the other. So you wanna make a plan to change your lifestyle so that you can identify the root cause, address the root cause and heal. Because believe me, your body is designed to heal you. But all these drugs that you keep putting in is only conflicting and compromising your own immune system and the intelligence that your body already has to heal you. Take the medication as a crutch. Like I said, there are very few people who may need to be on thyroid medication for a lifetime. 
Am I guaranteeing you that you can reverse your medication completely? No, but if you can't get off your medication completely, at least you can move from a 100 to a 12.5 or a 5 or even a 2.5 and that's so much better for your body. Everyone's different. Lifestyle works great for some people. It's a little slower for some people. The same way medication works. If everyone has a thyroid problem, everyone has different dosages because different dosages suit different people. So you need to understand a root cause analysis. So what you want to do is check your anti-TPO and your anti-TG. Get these two tests. If it's positive, you know you have a Hashimoto's, you can look to heal it. If it's not positive, then you know you have an underactive thyroid gland and your protocol is different. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.